Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Joel Chola, with your another edition of Sorts of You Topics. Today on the podcast, an interesting slew of topics to go over. Some retirements, Bruce Arians, Frank Gore, Bobby Wagner, the March Madness fallout with the men's side and the women's side, as well as Coach A, get thoughts on his legendary career coming to an end, um, as well as give some thoughts on as we are a few days away from opening day for the MLB. But thank you all for joining me. If you're new to the podcast and you want to see more of these videos, click that subscribe there in the corner, as well as the like button right there if you like this video. But thank you all. Today, first, I must go over Bobby Wagner. Bobby Wagner, who is a Hall of Famer already, a future Hall of Famer for the Seattle Seahawks, played there for a decade. Now he will put on a rival's colors starting this season. As he is signed with the Los Angeles Rams, the defending champion, Los Angeles Rams. Five years, fifty million. You know, the Rams. I mean, I get it, but it is still a bit hilarious how the Rams are the Super Bowl champions and yet they are kind of being a bit overlooked as far as the favoritism goes or the odds go for next season to potentially repeat and you look at what they've done this offseason thus far haven't even got to draft yet in a few weeks, but you know, besides Andrew Whitworth retiring and Austin Corbett going to the Panthers, their offense line is fairly intact. Fairly intact. They signed Matthew Stafford to a big extension. Fawn Miller did go to the Bills for a big contract, but of course they did sign Bobby Wagner. They still have Jalen Ramsey. You know, Aaron Donald. Of course, not much needs to be said. You know, they did trade Robert Woods to the Titans, but they picked up Allen Robinson, who, and we still don't know what's going to happen with OBJ, but I imagine that once he's healthy, that he'll sign a deal in the middle of the season with the Rams because, you know, he's hurt. Why can't he can't really do much, so you know we'll see. But the Rams should definitely be more respected, I would say, as far as looking to repeat. Because you also look at the landscape of the NFC and. As I mentioned last week a bit or with the mock draft, but 
you know, you got the Cardinals, you got the 49ers, who, of course, they beat in the NFC Championship. You got the Buccaneers. Saints, I imagine, are still going to be a problem. You know, Packers still have Aaron Rodgers. The MCs, I don't know what to think of. You know, yes, you got the Cowboys with, who won the division and have that talent, but I mean, I don't know. I like Washington Commanders, but you know, Carson Wentz, inconsistent. And I also like the Eagles, but you know, they got a formula and built around Jalen Hurts, and you know, we'll see. We'll see, but the NFC so far is still looking right for a taking for the Rams. Manu Ginobili. Manu Ginobili. A name we have not talked about in quite a while. One of the workhorses and one of the best competitors in NBA history was elected for the Basketball Hall of Fame. And, you know, no surprise. I mean, Manu, I mean, Tim Duncan, Manu Ginobili, Tony Parker, Kawhi Leonard, just four orchestrative pieces that were a part. Of course, Kawhi came at the end of the dynasty, kind of with the Spurs, but still, just some of the members to be recognized for the for the many championships in San Antonio with the Spurs. And no surprise, I mean, Manu, I did not, as now that he's retired, because I've, over the years, have gotten more fond of the NBA and basketball. I've no more been able to catch up on multiple players, past players, highlights, and work in the NBA, such as Kobe, such as Manu, such as Dirk, etc. But yeah, Manu definitely played his style, and it may not have made Popovich all that happy all the time, but it did work for a good portion of when he was there. Then, then starting with the retirements, but first, speaking of another future Hall of Famer, Patrick Peterson, the Pro Bowl corner who played a decade with the Cardinals last year with the Vikings, did a pretty good job, pretty decent job in his role in Minnesota, is being brought back on a one-year deal. You know, the Vikings have drafted quite a lot of corners in the draft recently over the years. And, you know, Patrick Pearson 
he can be really that mainstay for them or to hold down the fort temporarily, kind of like how Terrence Newman was at the end of his career in Minnesota. So there's a thought there. Or when, well, I think Xavier Rhodes, you know, he was starting to come along and then he just regressed. And then he was signed to Indy, did okay. But yeah, I mean, Patrick Peterson, if he ain't broke, don't fix it. So. Good for Minnesota. Now on to the retirements. So, first I'll start off with Bruce Arians. B.A. Bruce Arians. You know, provided he doesn't pull a Tom Brady or Brett Favre, Again, because he did retire once before with Cardinals, but hell of a journey for BA. Hell of a journey. You know, in the 2000s, he won two Super Bowls, a part of the offensive coaching staff. With the Pittsburgh Steelers in 2005, 2008, he was a solid part, an underrated part, in their almost dynasty in the NFL. The reason I say almost is, of course, in 2010. They almost, but no cigar, won a third title in that span, which would have been the seventh title for the Pittsburgh Steelers, but it went to the Green Bay Packers, won the Bruce Arians. Was the offense coordinator. Cornier, and that was kind of a turning point for Bruce Arians because that was his last game. And Pittsburgh, I believe, and then he was out the 2011 season. And then 2012, when Chuck Bogdano got the gig to go to Indy for, to be the head coach, he brought on Bruce to be the offense coordinator. And when Chuck went down with leukemia, I believe leukemia, Bruce Aaron did a hell of a job in place of Pagano and won, actually won coach of the year. And then it ultimately swung them the gig in Arizona the following year. And, you know, five solid seasons in Arizona. Ten wins in his first season, just shy of making the playoffs. Eleven. In his second season, but unfortunately, that was the Carson Palmer ACL tear year, as well as Drew Stanton going down as well. 2015, it looked like the marbles or all the pieces were in place, but that and they went to the NFC Championship game, but. You know, no, Chris Johnson, Carson Ballmer has a banged up finger. You know, 
and they just got swarmed by the Panthers. 2016 and 2017 were still solid seasons, but unfortunately after that, Bruce Aarons called it quits for the first time. And he could have said if he didn't call football again or if he wasn't a coach again, then, you know, it was a very good career, a very good stint. 2018, he went up in the booth and did some broadcasting. Did an okay job. Did an okay job. But then he returned in 2019 to coach the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And that year, you know, was the 30 for 30 year for Jameis. 33 touchdowns, 3 picks, 5,000 yards. But still an underwhelming season for Tempe Bay Buccaneers. Who seemed like they had moments of being a playoff team. And going very forward. But unfortunately, B.A. had enough with James's mistakes. Then, 2020. The pandemic year for the NFL. Tom Brady, when we all thought he was going to the Chargers or the Raiders, he goes to the Buccaneers, the Buccaneers, and it wasn't pretty at first, you know. But after a 7-5 season, you know, they had not lost after that. Their last loss was to the Chiefs. And their final victory was against the Chiefs in the Super Bowl in Raymond James. Bruce Aaron's first Super Bowl as a head coach. Great for him. And then it looked like this past season, they were primed to run back. They signed pretty much all their starters back. and But unfortunately, injuries derailed them down the stretch. And they lost an admirable way to the Los Angeles Rams in the divisional round. Earlier this year. But nonetheless. Great career for Bruce Arians. For BA. You know. I still feel like. He should have won a Super Bowl. In Arizona. But. Injuries happen. And. He was able to get that Super Bowl as a head coach with the Buccaneers. So great for him. Great that he's moving to the front office for the Buccaneers. Todd Bowles will take the reins now as the head coach with the Buccaneers. There will be co-defense coordinators. Now, in Tampa Bay, at least this season. So, that's something to keep an eye on. But, you know, you know, Top Bowls certainly deserved a, another crack at a head coaching gig. And, you know, with Tom Brady, with Byron Leftwich, I imagine he's not going to have to call much. For 
the Buccaneers, but yeah, will be something to keep an eye on, but happy second retirement, Bruce Arians. And Frank Gore, Frank Gore, you know, Frank Gore is an interesting story. You know, he was never the best running back in his prime. Never the best running back in his prime. But you can't lie about the consistency that he brought no matter what team he was on. You know, with the 49ers, he he had eight 1,000-yard seasons. Eight. In his nine seasons with the team, or actually, or actually, he was drafted in 2005, so actually, 10 seasons with the team, and eight out of 10, not bad, you know, Frank or you know. He was also in that little group of pretty good run, pretty good running backs that you thought, okay, they're gonna last a long bit. Beast Mode, Chris Johnson, Adrian Pearson. Jamal Charles, etc. And they all had their time. And they all made it worth it for the teams. But Frank Gore was a model of consistency. After, you know, because 2014 was. Kind of a strange turn, or actually back the year before, was a strange turnaround year for the 49ers. Because Alex Smith and Frank Gore were both drafted in the same year. And 2012, you know, Alex Smith goes down, Colin Kaepernick steps in. Does a hell of a job, and they ride it to the Super Bowl. Unfortunately, they come up short against the Ravens, but that was a jack team. That was a jack team for a few years in San Francisco. You know, with Navarro Bowman, with you know Alden Smith when he was in his prime. You know. Ahmad Brooks, I mean, Justin Smith, I mean, it's just crazy. And that was just on the defense. You know, Frank Gore, Crabtree, he was a solid act. You know, Vern Davis, I mean, Delaney Walker, you know, had a hell of a stable in San Fran. But, you know, the years come along, you know, Harbaugh was out, Alex Smith was out, you know, Smith retired, Bowman left, you know, etc. And that team just wasn't the same. And Frank Gore was one of those pieces that left. Now, when he left to Indianapolis, his pace did not slow down. He had three very good seasons 
in Indy. He had one 1,000 yard season and two that were really close to 1,000 yards. So Frank Gore did not slow down very much. Maybe a tad, but not much in Indy. And then he went to a couple of teams, you know, the Bills, you know, Dolphins, you know, Jets recently in 2020. And this sets it decline a bit, but that pace didn't stop him from going. And he retires as third all time for yardage for a running back. And Frank Gore, yes, never the best during his prime, but model of consistency. And he just kept going, going, going. Unfortunately, he now calls it quits, but, you know, I'm sure we're going to see his son in the NFL in a couple years. Because I, I believe his son is either a freshman or a sophomore in college. So, that's going to be something to look at an eye out for. See Frank or son play in the NFL. But yeah, when it comes, he's going to have tough footsteps to fall. But congratulations, Frank Gore, on a hell of a career. March Madness. The madness came to an end. It has come to an end. Now we're in April. That's not an April Fool's joke, even though it's not April Fool's. But yeah, the madness is over. You know, congratulations to Kansas as far as the men's side for being the Tar Heels, UNC, and for South Carolina, for the women to take down and win the title. So congrats to both teams. Congrats to both. You know, I don't want... Yes, March Madness is crazy. It's called March Madness for a reason. And I don't watch a lot of NCAA basketball. I do watch it from time to time. And, you know, the big story was basically for the men's side was Duke and Coach K. You know, Coach K, you know, he... It's awfully hard for people to get our competitors, coaches, etc. Awfully difficult to get that storybook ending. But we've had some do it. Some were able to write it. And that was such as Ray Lewis, Ed Reed, etc. But yeah, we've some people do it, but so Coach K, so amazing effort in his final year, coming just shy of the national championship, losing to the Tar Heels in the final four, eighty-one to seventy-seven. You know. 
just Coach K will be remembered as one of the one of the greatest, if not the greatest, college football coach of all time. You know, far time NCAA champion. Not just at Army or not just at Duke, but Army as well. I think some people forget that his coaching career started at Army and he was able to fluctuate to a great career at Duke. And, you know, again, I don't watch NCAA basketball a lot, but one thing I always know is that the great players, they have a lot of bad stuff to say about Coach K. And hired many records, um, multiple Coach of the Year awards, multiple championships, and just however run. So, great to see. Just unfortunately, the ending didn't just find the means. You could say that. But anyway, that's the episode for today, guys. Uh, that is all I have for today. But I hope you guys enjoy it. Oh, later than I would have wanted, but nonetheless, getting your sports OE topics on Tuesday, as always. But thank you all. Again, if you're new to the podcast and you want to see more of these videos, click that subscribe down in the corner as well as dislike as if you like this video as well. But thank you all. Be safe. I'm Angel Chilab. See you next week. Peace.